It doesn't seem that a week goes by without the riding sensation Holly Dorr smashing through the barriers and breaking yet another record. So we pop down to Oaksy House to catch up with the rider and find out if that path to success has been completely trouble free or has there been a speed bump or two along the way. Holly Doyle's fourth win on the day. History in the making here. Holly Doyle for a five-timer. Can she hold on? Yes, she can. Last clown's got there. Holly Doyle's done it. She's broken the record. Holly does it again. Light Lily wins it. A treble for Holly this afternoon in the sunshine at Lingfield. Holly Doyle, four or five lengths clear of Hujera Prince. True Sham wins in the hands of Holly Doyle. Scarlet Dragon puts his nose in front. Scarlet Dragon and Holly Doyle wins. It's been a, an amazing year yet again Holly and we're gonna have a look back through some of the the happy memories and also where it all started eight years you've been riding and it's it's changed a lot Holly hasn't it in a in an eight-year period thank God yeah no come on can you you remember you went straight from school mm. into into working you know like it wasn't there was no honeymoon period or anything you went straight into work no I yeah I went um straight into a full-time job. I think I actually, I was an amateur to begin with, and I, I think I actually did my amateur licence course when I was still at school. Okay. So when I left school, I was able to ride straight away. We can have a look. This is very early on. You were saying that you thought this was New Year's Day, is it? Yeah, this was, um, I think it was New Year's Day. I think it's that civil meeting that they always have my first ever winner for Richard Hannon, um, who I served my apprenticeship with. And first one in, Aguero under Holly Doyle has gone into stall one. You look so good in the jockey position. You know, they, they call it, you know, your, just your normal shape on the horse. You look perfect there. Yeah, I think that probably the pony racing which helped me develop that um, quite quickly. It was the uh, finishing uh, stages that I needed to adapt <laughs> and um, improve on big time. And so, at this particular time as well, you're, you're what sort of weight? I was probably seven stone two or something. Yeah, and so we've got 450 kilos. You're getting a bit busier in the saddle. <laughs> Talk us through this, Holly. Yeah, um, it all looked all right until I used to pick my stick up. I hadn't really figured out a technique that suited me <laughs> at this stage. Um, I wish I had been told not to use my stick for my first 20 rides or so. I, I um, it all went to pot when I used to pick my stick up. So what's your thought process or your feeling at this particular time? I remember my first few rides, I used to be so desperate to win. I remember I wouldn't go through the motions. I'd go from maybe push for a furlong and then I'd pick my stick up and see red almost. <laughs> I wouldn't know what I was doing. I just wanted to win and I wouldn't be thinking about what I was doing. I just wanted to win, the horse could be going left or right, and I just <laughs> wanted to win, which isn't great, really. Um, so it took me quite a while to kind of um, sort that out. And when you look back at this, and you see the bumping late on, what, what, do, you, what do you think? I see your eyes. It's horrendous. Look, uh, it's really? horrendous, yeah. I know, I, I wasn't as fit as I should have been, probably, and I hadn't, like I said, I hadn't worked out a technique that suited me. It, it took a while for the penny to drop, but it was weird because once it it just dropped one one ride one day and I was away. Um, I don't know why that was, just clicked. I don't know if I remember back then watching it and thinking how bad I looked. <laughs> I don't know if that kind of registered back then. I probably was just happy to win. We're going to break it down now on the Equisize on how things have changed through the years, Holly. And did you did you always ride? particularly short or did you ride too short at at one stage i.e the length of your your stirrups i think to begin with when i first started out i rode way too short um i wasn't fit enough to ride as short as i i was trying to ride <laughs> and you you've always ridden with the the ball of your foot in the iron yeah i don't know it just feels natural and most comfortable to me and was that something from America or is that, is that from ponies even? Maybe, I don't know. I've never been told to do it or I've never tried to do it. It's just how it feels. <laughs> right. And so, so you've got like the, the cross of the reins. It's something that you wouldn't have had when you, you race in ponies or ride in ponies even. Um, not, you know, ride every day, riding every day ponies, but it's something, you know, you got taught pretty quickly when you went onto the pony racing circuit. 
Go on, just show us your your position as you you know if you were cantering the post for argument's sake. Is that your is that what you're looking for for you know the ideal sort of length of reign on the horse? Um, yeah, I remember when I was a kid, my dad always used to scream at me, hands down, <laughs> hands down, heels down. <laughs> um, so it's something that I kind of got um, embedded into my brain from an early age. Now, we fast forward three years and a, a record-breaking success back at the same venue where you rode that winner for, for Richard Hammond. Yeah, this was um, Class Clown for David Barr and I... <sighs> Buried me going to post, tried to run away with me, and I think I was drawn 14 or something, not great, and never travelled really. I think he was quite well fancied going into this, and um, yeah. But your, your diff, the difference in you, Holly, the difference, the feel, the way you hold the reins, that the whole confidence regarding you and your riding, you've changed a massive amount from what we were, we were looking at a few moments ago. Yeah, this is a few years on, so I'm pretty glad. <laughs> glad I'd improved a little bit, but um, I'd made, you know, I'd learnt from my mistakes. I'd made plenty of mistakes as an apprentice, you know, you do. And I used to be pretty hard on myself and beat myself up quite a lot, you know. I'd have plenty of sleepless nights thinking things over, and um, so I just used to try and learn from my mistakes, probably the hard way. And this is a horse who, for me looked really reluctant and it's about you having to gather him up um, you know you've used your whip fluently with with both hands and it still doesn't look until the final 50 yards that you're gonna gonna get that big win on the board yeah I never felt like winning he was hanging he wasn't traveling he didn't really want to go through with it um, but luckily in the last time he's tried he's got his head in front You'd been in the pressure cooker coming up to this, hadn't you? Yeah, big time. Um, yeah, everyone was going on about this, 100, 100 winners. Or so. Um, so it was just a huge relief. <laughs> Would you use this on a, on a regular basis? Not, not now, middle of season, you're flat out, but has it, has it been a tool you've used? Yeah, I've, I've used this simulator you know, all, all throughout my career. I remember when I was um, a seven pound claimer at Dave Evans's, as, about two and a half hours away, and I, I used to come up here once a week to see John Reed and use this um, in this room. And I've got a simulator at home now in the garage that, you know, for example, through lockdown, we'd go on. I, I just, it's just really good for fitness and to use the muscles that you'd use for a race. And, and you say you did use it when you were a seven pound claimer. It hasn't got a big whale mark, whale mark or something <laughs> big bump on its back there where you were knocking around on him. No, all that's, all this that's is been probably what set me straight, to be honest, getting on, on these and learning how to use my stick in a rhythm because when I was at um, Dave's to begin with, I never had a simulator like this. Uh, so would, for the youngsters coming through, would this get them working the right muscles, teaching them the, the basics going forward, something that you probably didn't have going forward. Yeah, definitely. It would point you in the right direction at least. Um, there's nothing the same as riding a race, as you know, or riding a horse in a race. Everything's different, even, you know, the race and suddenly when you're racing gear on your first ride, it feels alien, doesn't it? But um, this definitely pointed me in the right direction. Scarlet Dragon is the next. And a huge landmark, another one, Holly, that you managed to set, the, the Royal Ascot success. Yeah, this is you know an, an amazing day for me um, to rid my first Royal Ascot win on this horse for Henry Ponsonby and Alan King, who supported me since I was a seven pound claimer, was pretty big for me. I mean, what's he like as a as a horse, or what would you have learnt from him, if you like, as you're as you're going through your career? He's not the most straightforward, to say the least. Um, I remember I rode him. When I was a five pound claimer, I won the old Rowley Cup on him um, for Eve Johnson Horton. And I was buried in amongst maybe 25 runners over a mile and a half at Newmarket, no way out. And he was running away with me. And I was so light back then, I, I didn't have the strength to, he was, you know, clipping heels. Um, you know, if I had got, been able to get out, he wouldn't have won. Um, they, I, I got kept in the whole way and he just, I got a, got a gap of two out and he, he won really well. Um, but after that race, I was, you know, I got a few tellings off because I was climbing over the back of everything. And um, I realised after that, I need to get a bit stronger here. There's a great point 
on the turn here and it shows your awareness and as a rider how you've improved so much that you even had a little look to your right hand side because you're going to go the brave route on the inside but you had that little look just to make sure that you weren't going to cause any interference as they round into the into the home stage just being aware of where you are yeah that's it you know i've you know learned over the years <laughs> Spatial awareness, I suppose, and what's going on around you. It just comes naturally in the end. Talk about threading your way through there. That's fantastic. Now, so we're well down inside the last. When did you think he's finally going to go and get on with it? When I got the run at the furlong and a half out, I thought, if he goes through with it, he'll win, he'll win here. And he still felt like he wasn't giving me 100% at this point. Go on, what was the feeling like over the line at Royal Ascot? Oh, it was amazing. It was, um, like, there was no crowd there, obviously, but I, I didn't even notice. I was just in my own little bubble. I was just elated. Do you look at any other riders, Holly, you know, on, on your um, journey through your career? Did you have a particular... Um, rider in mind who you thought you wanted to, to sort of mould yourself on? Um, Kathy Gannon, yeah. Um, she obviously, when I was younger, she used to ride all the Davis horses um, and she used to ride out with me a little bit, so I was obsessed with her. I wanted to be just like her. And, but I think growing up, I kind of tried to be more like someone and mould my riding on, wanting to look at specifically like this rather than naturally finding my own way. Um, and it wasn't until I kind of accepted that I'm not going to look like them. I'm not built the same. I'm not. Don't ride the same. Um, I started to kind of find my style, maybe. It's crazy, isn't it, to think we've gone from the 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 first Richard Hannon winner, and you see yourself in your own words bumping around a little bumping bit, around, on, yeah. on the <laughs> and then and then you, you know, then the the hundred winners and gorgeous Nora. Uh, listed win, Lingfield, flying down the outside. You're very fluent regarding your your whip, if you like, from one hand to the other, and a big, big difference. Yeah, I, um, you know, obviously it's really important that you can switch your stick from left to right and right to left. I think that that can um, make a huge difference with you know winning and losing. Um, on this day, uh, she flashed home and um, won nicely. Is that something that you would say to any of the youngsters coming through now? Beef, you know, did you have to ride out with your whip in your left hand, or you right, are you naturally right or left-handed? Um, naturally right-handed, but um, ride out every lot of a stick. I think you know everyone should really. And um, I used to practice pulling it through the whole time when I was an apprentice, and just trying to you know make it just as natural in both hands. Were you one of them annoying apprentice jockeys walking around the yard spinning your whip from mm, yeah. in both hands and all that at the time? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, it's important for the young riders coming through. Yeah, it is. Um, you know, it's, you know in, like I said in the finish there, it's um, the difference between winning and losing. And obviously, if you've got a difficult horse that's hanging or you need to be strong enough and able to correct it quick enough. And so when you start to pick the horse up, do you sort of crouch down? You, you, you would get lower and lower in the saddle the further you worked into the race. Yeah, ideally, you try and um, just get as streamlined as you can and try and lift the horse for as far as you can before having to go full pelt into it. And they're not easy, the exercises, are they? Um, no, they're not very... I don't find them very natural. Look at that perfect balance there. So there's no bumping in the saddle. That's just absolute rhythm on the horse. Nothing, there's nothing worse. There are only very few riders. That's perfect, Holly. That's perfect. Don't need to go forever. You're big horses. Um, <laughs> but it, uh, you don't bump up and down in the saddle, do you? You know, yours is all a, a rhythm thing. Uh, not anymore. <laughs> um, yeah, I think because I'm so small, I'm quite lucky that I can kind of keep things. Well, sometimes I look quite am animated when I'm like all out in the finish, but um, in general I, I'm quite small, so it's better for me. But you have to keep it, you know, like if you've got to work on a percentage, if you're pushing and you say sometimes you get 
rough around the edges. You know, your Royal Ascot win, you know, you're moving and then you're also kicking as well. There's a lot of, a lot of impetus. Yeah, just trying to put um, as much force and strength into getting that horse over the line in front. So we've talked steps along the way, Holly, and you'd, you'd gone close up at the highest level. Um, obviously, Dame Malio has been fantastic and Group 2 winner as far as she is concerned. And then Glenn Shiel, I mean, I suppose, the, was the pressure on after a big run when he, when he ran up at Haydock? Um, I expected him, you know, going from Haydock to Ascot. I was expecting a big run, but his price is different, isn't it? Um, obviously, us within the yard and Archie, we all thought he'd have a right chance, and that he did. Oh, come on. I mean, you, you've ridden so many winners, right, now up until this stage. I bet you can't believe that you're cantering along in front and nobody's taking you on in the early stages. I couldn't believe it. You know, I had it so easy in front, and that just doesn't happen in the Group 1, does it? And to ride a horse so forceful like that in um, that greater race, if I'd have got beaten, I'd have got a lot of abuse, I'd say. Why? Because I kicked him in the belly at the free pole in the group one, and it's just something that, <laughs> you know, it doesn't happen very often. But you, you, if you hadn't have kicked him in the belly at the three pole, he'd have been beaten. Yeah, exactly, but, you know, um, that's, that suits my horse and um, doesn't suit some others. A lot of people always talk about the finish and you want a nose. We've talked about how you've improved as a rider from bumping to this. <laughs> <laughs> and, but what about the gait? You know, the technique to hold a handful of mane, get your weight off the horse's back, get them to go forward. He was about, for me, three quarters of a length quicker than anything from the gate. Yeah, I mean, in these sprints, it's pretty crucial that you get away to a good start and um, that he did. I, I mean, I gave him a good kick as the gate's open and he responded really well. Is that, is that all about timing? You say give him a kick, are you looking at the starter? You're looking at the gate, you're looking at the button? I always look at the starter and um, try and give him a bit of a squeeze as the gate's open. And For a big horse, a big heavy horse, he showed plenty of gate speed. But that, just watching that back time again, I mean, literally, he has momentum going forward as they're opening. Yeah, this horse, um, I said to Archie, I was a bit worried beforehand because he was lifeless in the paddock. He, I had to hoof him down to post. Even at the start, when I was getting my girth checked, he was stood there with his head down, lobbing around. He's, it's not until he actually gets in the gate that he, he grows free hands and he comes to life. And we've mentioned Glenn Shield. So you're in the starting stalls. Everything's, the, you know, the, the starter is getting up on his rostrum. The last three are coming in. What's the final sort of seconds before you jump? Like, from a jock's point of view, your hands, you know, a handful of men. I know we haven't got any main here, but what, what, what are you trying to get out um, of the horse? I always try and just get a handful of mane in my left hand, whatever hand I haven't got my stick in, and I. I don't know, I just brace, you know, give them plenty of rein because so, when a horse jumps, you know, if you've got them up too tight and you're grabbing hold and they can jolt you forward and then you hamper the horse's rhythm. So I just try and give it a big long rein, hold a bit of mane and sit still and try and go forward with the horse's motion. And, and but in that scenario, that's perfect, isn't it? You know, you talk about, so if, you, if you've let go of the reins, the horse has his or her head to jump your your impetus is going forward. There's nothing worse than seeing the horse come out, at, you know, yeah. head up in the air. And you think to yourself, oh. you do see it a lot. Yeah, even even yeah. now, and you think professional riders, how on earth are they still yeah. sort of hanging off the horse's head? Yeah, I know. Sometimes it's hard, you know, if a horse does something like flips his head up, come out the gates, it can knock, knock you for six. But um, I think the more rides you get, you become kind of aware to the horse's kind of behaviour as such before you get in the gates. But it, it, it's not talked about enough for me. You know, Glenn Shield, Group 1 winner, first out of the gates by three parts of a length, and you, you won a nose. I mean, if I was to break it down, I'd say you nearly won the race in that, in that first heartbeat. Yeah, I suppose because it was um, such a fine margin that we won, that probably was what won us the race, the gate speedy shared. And did you think you'd won? 
No, I thought I had oh. been beaten. So I, I hadn't even that, you know, that feeling when you cross a line, you've won, I didn't even get that because I honestly thought I'd been beaten and putting up a few of the lads said, oh, well done, holes. I said, I, I didn't win. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I didn't win and they were calling it. Um, then when they called me out the winner, I was just so shocked that I'd won. Where do you go from here? Um, I just need to keep improving my riding tactically and I could tighten up a hell of a lot. You know, I've got a long way to go still and that's really good that there's a lot more improvement to be found. And do you, do you think further down the line or are you very much a day-to-day -day person and it's just about, um, just about getting better? Um, I take every day as it comes because, you know, the ups and downs of racing can knock you back or knock you forward, so I just try and take it as it comes. And of your, of your skills as a, a rider or a person, what, is, what has changed the most, do you think? Um, a bit of both. I, you know, my mindset's changed a lot over the last few years and um, thankfully so is my riding. <laughs>